So I know I already covered Hades 2 and Stellar Blade and all the weirdness going on about the coverage of these games, but I, I just, there's too much. I had to make another video on this. So Stellar Blade is three days away from launch, okay? It's currently the 23rd, the game comes out on the 26th, and people are hyped, rightfully so. They are ready. And it's been announced that the game will be uncensored at launch, and no, I do not believe that means that it's going to be like full-on... Uh, uncensored if you know what I mean like adult uncensored it's just the fact that they are not planning to censor it for other countries that would normally ask them to remove things like violence or graphic uh, imagery of you know the zombies or whatever they're, they're, it's really weird a lot of countries are very different with the things that have to be censored but again this is a win for everybody because it seems like Sony, PlayStation, uh, Shift Up, the studio that's actually making the game, are all on the same page that this game needs to be left the way it was intended to be played for the absolute enjoyment of the fans, which is awesome. And of course, this has caused a lot of weird reactions from p different outlets online. And Vera Dark pointed out here that The Gamer has this article saying that Stellar Blade's uncensored release shouldn't be a cause for celebration. And of course, it is just these these people at the gamer, these online uh, games journalists who just have the worst takes and the absolute most wretched opinions on the planet. And we're going to go through some more of this stuff about Hades too, because honestly, this is by far the weirdest thing I've ever seen online. But first, this game Zao, Tales of Kinzara, came out today. And people like Michael Ironstylist, this guy who I've interacted with a few times on Twitter, kudos on him for not blocking me. He is pointing out the fact that people are boycotting the game uh, because it's on this the Sweet Baby Inc. detected, DEI detected list, okay? And he somehow thinks it's a win that it's got like 9 out of 10 from Dual Shockers, 4 out of 5 from Eurogamer, 8 out of 10 from IGN Spain, 8 out of 10 from GameStop, whatever. That, that's because people wanted to give it a good score because, again, these companies, these journalists... It, it gives them these diversity points and these little virtue signal points that they say, oh yeah, a game with a brown character. It's a great game. We love it, right? That's not a win. But apparently these people also think you're a racist troll if you point out that it was involved with Sweet Baby Inc. You got this person here, Zeno, child of Sumeru City, okay? Anyway, if you aren't a Twitter check engagement farming uneducated racist troll and want to play a game rich in African culture and about grief that parallels the creator's grief and gratitude and a beautiful tribute to his father, here's the link. Great. Awesome. You know what? The game might be good. The game could be fun. But let me tell you something. I'm going to refresh this right now. The game came out today. It is not yet midnight. There are only 131 people playing it right now. It peaked on Steam at 287 people. This game that is in partnered uh, partnership with EA, heavily promoted by the press. My own, like the Epic Game Store tried to get me to buy the game. It popped up on my, when I turned my computer on. It, it's absolutely nuts that the games like this are getting propped up. The other game that's getting propped up massively right now by these, these journalists is Hades 2, okay? And we've talked about Hades 2 before. So Packer Girl points out that this voice actor from Penrose Station is saying things like, you all literally do not understand how much I effing love the decision to give a god a prosthetic and a wheelchair. I'm losing my mind. I'm barking and gnawing on the drywall. The fact that he is both fat and very sexy is just give me him. Complete lunatic. This is an unhinged, unwell person, okay? <laughs> You have a journalist for uh, them, which is apparently another online publication, Kazuma Hashimoto, saying how Hades 2 continues its trend of writing interesting characters and love interests, why I'm bummed I can't romance history's biggest wife guy, and how Nemesis has absolutely captured my attention and my heart. These people are living out some sort of weird fantasy through this game while simultaneously calling people freaks and degenerates for wanting to play a game that has a beautiful, sexy looking woman in it. Okay, this is this is where we're at with these people. A Streamlabs UX designer, Cakes Tina. Now I hate the fact that I, I use Streamlabs because it is an exceptionally woke company. I just wish it wasn't so easy to use. I wish I could switch over to OBS easier than using Streamlabs because Streamlabs is a horrible company. This person, Cakes Tina, says, I spent the morning watching the Hades 2 stream, and now I'm spending the rest of the day just unquenchably horny. When that game comes out, it's absolutely effing over for 3D people. I'm not kidding. These are real human beings saying these things, okay? Boss Fight, which is a Netflix game studio, Damian Schubert, 
trying to argue that there's a, a massive difference between Hades 2 and Stellar Blade here, saying, just a reminder that the criticism of the one on the right has been pretty tiny, that Hades has long been praised for its horny art, and that this is a non-issue that chuds desperately want to be an issue. We're not the ones making an issue out of it. Every article explaining why this is bad and this is good is the one making an issue out of it. Uh, you have people here from The Gamer, the person that wrote the article about how the uncensored version, the uncensored release shouldn't be a cause for celebration, okay? This person has protected their account after this article came out. Because in the article, it's been kind of like, uh, well, Packer Girl demonstrates here that she has written two very different articles. One of them being, Hades 2 is going to be a red letter day for bisexuals. Versus this article saying that the uncensored release shouldn't be a cause for celebration, okay? And as she gets through the article here, Packer Girl points out that this is a very odd person. So they say everyone is simping for Hades 2. In other news, water is wet and pigs can, uh, can't fly. This sequel is always going to set off our horny receptors with the original introducing us to all manner of buff, charming gods from the Greek pantheon we can't help but fall for. There are girls and boys who are buff, slim, fat, disabled, and owning their attractiveness in ways that are easy to admire. And as a girl who's unashamedly bisexual, I honestly don't know where to look with a game like this. I mean, these people need help. They honest to God need help. And so now what this brings us to is Kotaku. And again, I think Kotaku, the gamer sucks, okay? Mary Sue is unhinged, but Kotaku has become probably the worst offender in both these hypocritical takes from their journalists, from their editors, people who say one thing is bad and one thing is good when they have no reason to actually stand on it and say why, uh, other than their own weird sexual proclivities. And now we have this article from Kotaku about a horror dating sim that is setting a hot new standard, okay? It says, come for the hot eldritch, uh, eldritch babes, stay for the emotionally resonant story about love and horror. Now, I'm not kidding. This is a sexy goat woman, apparently, all right? Some sort of goat goddess. The article says, when Sucker for Love First Date was released in 2022, its blend of cosmic horror vibes with dating sim mechanics made it a cult hit. Um, but it's essentially one big joke about how funny it would be to make uh, Cthulhu into a busty babe that you could kiss as long as you did progressively more horrific things for her. It's a good joke, admittedly, and one that I enjoyed, but it only goes so far, and the game's genre mashup was not without some significant flaws. With that in mind, the prospect of a sequel seemed double-edged. On one hand, I want more cosmic horror hotties to swoon over, but on the other, I thought a second game would immediately feel tired. Thank God or whatever cosmic deity you want that I was so very wrong. Sucker for Love, Date to Die For is a magnificent, uh, magnificent, why can't I speak? Magnificent sequel to First Date. It refines what worked in its predecessor while adding new twists and uh, turns to both the horror and romance aspects of the game. The result is more terrifying, more swoon-worthy, and more balanced, a game that accomplishes its goal and style. Okay? So, she goes on to point out that the protagonist in the game, a girl this time, encounters a deity named Roxanne, who is a busty goat milf. Yes, you heard that correct. Busty goat milf. That is what she's into, apparently. Roxanne and Stardust are immediately infatuated with each other and agree to team up to stop the cultists and escape the house. And the article goes on to say basically how wonderful it is that these two's personalities and their relationship grow together. And it's just funny, but it's touching all in the right places and how you get to kiss them and how you have all these hopes of getting to get. I mean, it's just it's disturbing. This is a goat woman. And this person writes this whole article about how amazing it is that you get to. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Fall in love with this person, this goddess that looks like a horny goat. But this person, unsurprisingly, who's been writing for Kotaku for a long time, also has things about 10 games from the Palestinian Relief Bundle to play first, okay? You can guess where their politics lie. They already have me blocked on Twitter and I've never interacted with this person. Kind of like Alyssa Mercante, who has me, had me blocked for, I think, now two months, and yet is still putting out stuff like this. Apologize for your eyes. Uh, apparently... She's got her New York uh, Rangers jersey on in her underwear and putting that out on Twitter like it's completely normal. Apparently, she's getting back to her cam girl days because the job of Kotaku is not working so well. But this is the level of degeneracy that we're really dealing with, guys. People that want to call you a pervert for playing a game with a hot Korean girl in it while simping for a horny goat goddess. All right. This is where we are with these people. This is why nobody takes game journalism seriously anymore. 
Honestly, I'm not sure if there was ever a time when you could really take them seriously. Maybe back in the days where all they really produced were game guides. But yeah, let me know what y'all think about this. Let me know if um, if this kind of game is your up your alley. I mean, maybe some of you are into this kind of stuff, but it's definitely not for me. And I think anybody who simps that hard for this kind of thing needs to go get therapy ASAP. All right, guys, I'll catch you later. All right, and if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you for being here. I do have two channels, Minimal Effort Podcast, as well as my gaming channel. I do have a Twitch and Kick for my gaming channel. We do live streams over there occasionally, maybe once a week. And then if you are in the market for a new PC, make sure to check out Meta PCs. Click the link I have down below. Use code TEBO at checkout for a special discount. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.